Welcome to another Museum FAQ video. I'm Paul Orselli, President and Chief Instigator of POW, Paul Orselli Workshop. And I am delighted to welcome all the way across the waves in the UK, Steve Pizzi. How you doing, Steve? I'm doing well. I'm a bit sort of uh, locked down at the moment, but I'm dying to get out there again. <laughs> you, um, you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> the world is. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, uh, well, uh, so I always like to start out by having folks tell us a little bit about their background, sort of how they got to where they are now, and then we will launch into the conversation. So uh, how is it that you got to where you are now? <laughs> How long have you got? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you, can give us the, you can give us the condensed version. Condensed version. Well, I've always been involved with doing stuff with the public. And that's, uh, you know, when I used to be in the astronomy club and there was a big show in my home city called Leicester, um, where Richard III uh, sort of hung around there a long time ago. But I, I wasn't around then, despite what some people might say. Um, and we used to, um, the, the astronomy club was, was quite good. It wasn't too nerdy. And um, they had a patch at, or pitch at this show, you know, the Leicester Abbey Park show, a big thing. And uh, I was about 14 or 15. I think the girls were wearing Rara skirts, which made it well worth going to. And um, I did a, I did a thing about making a telescope or what you could see and, 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 and about astronomy and radio astronomy was getting big and the father was an electronics chap and, um, and I sort of did sketches and drawings and, and waved my arms about and uh, I haven't really stopped. <laughs> I was going to say, and, and, that, and that brings us to today. I'm still sort of making sketches and waving your arms about. It is, and that's the constant thread that runs through it. I mean, my background is physics and then um, physics, maths, statistics and probability theory, which is coming in useful these days. Um, but I was in industry, went to industry, which was all about getting stuff out of the lab and into production. Uh, involved a bit of photovoltaics, bits for satellites, things like that. Um, and then I sort of, um, so I've always been interested in the science, but also the making, making things and thinking to the side of it and the public side. And um, I just had this notion, I went off traveling for six months in South America um, and sort of wandered about it, which was really good. And when I came back, and I thought, well, you, you don't really need much. And um, I, I got, and then I happened to go to the Exploratorium. That's when I was working for the Science Museum and collecting stuff, which strangely enough, the Smithsonian weren't collecting. And I knew where the stuff was, you know, Ames Research and, um, uh, various places I got into, all those Silicon Valley sort of places. And I just sort of roamed, walked in the door and um, just to grab stuff for the museum. So I got flight spare things um, into the science museum because I was involved with the space science side of things. Uh, then. And um, I went into Intel. They showed me the production line and uh, here's Mr. Pizzi's from the British Science Museum in London, and he's uh, uh, we're just going to explain what we do here. And then I said, "Oh, I noticed you use wrap wire wraps and also as as connectors and what are you having trouble with purple plague or something?" Which you know, I think was an oxidation pro. Anyway, the big hand appeared on my shoulder, and I was sort of turned around and marched out of the production unit sat down in a fancy boardroom they go right you said you were from a museum and I said yeah I am from a museum I'm collecting the latest stuff and you do the latest stuff and he said well how do you know about this then I said I was working on it a year ago ah oh. and then they got really interested about the public side of it you know because it's not just old steam engines and things marvelous though they are so it's about modern stuff as well. It's whatever takes your interest. So um, I just remember 
And I went to the States and I forgot to take a credit card. That was my first big mistake. The second big mistake was I forgot to take my driving license. So um, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, surprised, I I'm surprised you didn't end up in jail on that well, trip. Well, I nearly did actually, because uh, I went, I think it was the Ames Research Place, which was a military base as well. And I'd walked, I'd walked for bloody miles from the nearest train, not having a hire car. So I found a little gate in a chain link fence and walked through it and then walked across and came to the back of a big building. And it, and it said something about reporting to the sentry. And there was a guy with a sort of machine gun or something, very smart. And I tapped him on the shoulder. And uh, said, I'd like to see Dr. So and so. Anyway, let's say he had a colourful turn of phrase when he informed me that I'm not supposed to do that, can't I read? And I said, Well, I, I knew at that moment I mustn't be a smart, wise guy. I had to be the you know, foggy foreigner. I said, oh, I'm very sorry, but. I seem to have ended up behind the notice, so I can't read it. What does it say? You're supposed to report to the guard. And um, anyway, it was most put out because they're, they're worried about terrorists or something. But I didn't have, I didn't want to say the next obvious thing, you know, or say I was. <laughs> But anyway, that, that was good. And I got some really good stuff off them and got, and they paid to ship it back to the museum and everything. But that was my real, not my first taste of America. I'd been to Boston before, but the first taste of all the excitement that was going on in Silicon Valley and down there. Um, so, so, so uh, that's, a, that's maybe a good, a, good segue it, into uh, how you, you, you were, you said you were working at the Science Museum in London, but yeah. uh, also uh, before we started the call, I, even though you won't say it, I will say it, that certainly you uh, were one of the founders of the, I would say the modern British interactive movement, um, which probably led to the modern European interactive movement. But um, I, I know uh, you, have been thinking a lot and you've also been given awards related to how these uh, science experiences or interactive experiences can actually happen outside of the of the museum so I, i'm i'm interested in hearing you talk a little bit about that because uh i think yeah. that that might be you know pe people think Oh well, we can do all these things in museums, and the, you're at the science museum, or so on and so forth. But you've had a lot of experience outside museums and with outside exhibits, and that. So I, I'm yeah. I wonder if you could talk well, a little bit about that. Well, what happened? Um, I mean, as you know, I, I, I worked with uh, Professor Richard Gregory, who was an absolute inspiration. You know, I, I, ideas everywhere, new know everybody uh sort of roller coaster kind of good for the brain but hard on the nerves kind of experience and uh i worked for him just to get him started on his exploratory as it was going to be in bristol but um what i was doing i was a, we had um the millennium came up and then some big money came up and uh, for architectural things and they noticed that, that Quite a few of these were places called science centers. And they're, they're millions, hundreds, you know, a lot of money anyway, was flying around. And meanwhile, a number of us had been scrabbling around in the dirt trying to do stuff. And none of it was coming our way. And I was sounding off at a conference. And I was saying, look, all this, all this money going into, into glass palaces in big cities. And I thought, as so though you have to go through a door to find science, you know, you have to, oh, you get a science center. I know, we open the door and we'll find some science. I mean, that's debatable sometimes, isn't it? But the, uh, and I, I don't know, uh, somebody was very interested in what I was saying or being very polite, I'm not sure which. Um, and I said, the, the point is, the point is, it's, you don't have to go through the door. It's 
all around us. You know, the world's it's biggest. Not, it's, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a giant building and a golden door. It's, no, <laughs> it's doing it's science. Open, you open your door, you go out, and that's the science center. And uh, it's in the landscape, it's all around. And um, anyway, I won't, I won't give a name away, but she said, right. You're saying all the right things. It's this Nesta giving money for people to just think and take their ideas further. So I know they'll pay your existing salary to cover that. They'll give you a travel grant. They'll do all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, are you interested? And so I, I thought about it for about three weeks. Of course, I didn't have bit of hand off. And um, I had to think of a theme, you know, so this, this, this hemisphere is in great discussion and this, this thing back here. Have I told you my theory of the brain? <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> you want to hear? It's like a lava lamp. So you look inside, if you could look inside, you'd see the old, you know, hippie lava, ha lava lamps. So an idea comes like this and it sort of comes to the top and that's the most interesting thing you've got. And then it starts to go down, but another thing comes up just at the right moment. And that's exactly what happened. And I said, oh, I'm very interested in getting the public interested in science in the landscape. And I thought, where did that come from? Ah, oh, it must be the old lava lamp working full pelt. And so I, long story short, I got um, a, a grant equivalent to a year's money with travel and everything else to to explore science in the landscape and that 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 started to give me some really good exhibit ideas and the travel grant um ended up with a conference in iceland because iceland is one giant science center and the other one was in minneapolis st paul and we did a science in the urban landscape thing in the freezing cold. Yeah, really I, we, were both, we were both we were both there. <laughs> but I was on the bit of the pavement that was heated from the, you know, that, that biomass burning thing. Uh, you were calculating the water going under the the bridge on the Mississippi, weren't you? That's yeah, the, the 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 fallacy of that uh, whole prototyping experience outdoors in the winter in Minneapolis, St. Paul, is that we expected people on the street to stop and talk with us about, about the prototypes, which you can imagine. First off, there weren't a lot of people on the street and anybody who was on the street was looking to get into a warm building, not to talk with these kooks with all this stuff on the street. So yeah, yeah that, uh, that there, there might be a lesson about science in the landscape there somewhere, but. <laughs> ah, stick to the heated pavement, that's the answer. Anyway, the idea took off and, um, and some, some good exhibits came out of it. And so I've always had this idea of exhibits being outside. The Indian Science Centre is always, and they, they was baking hot. They, they seem to like having these exhibits outdoors as well as the Science Centre itself. I mean, some of them were a bit tricky, like uh, explore the differential of a large truck with your hands while someone else is turning the back wheel. And you go, ooh, coffee grinder, hmm. But, that, but the idea of being outside, people treat things differently. They hang around the exhibit longer and, and, and they, they have, they, they'll sit in it, they'll have lunch in it and they'll come back. There's a different atmosphere and you've got trees out there, people know where they are. Well, uh, speaking about the oh, outside, sure yeah, that's what I was, this is perfect visual. Oh, you you oh. can hold up that picture. I was just going to mention Hurstman Sue because you run the Observatory Science Center and it is obviously in the landscape. Go ahead, hold up the picture and we'll, okay. we'll put a link, we'll put a We'll put a link to the the observatory below, but maybe you could talk a little bit about that because well, that's clearly in the landscape. My other thing, I, we've got a workshop, as, as you know, in, in the beautiful Acton in West London. <laughs> we've got a private joke about that. 
the anyway. actin, the actin, the actin in London looks different than the actin in Massachusetts. A little bit. Sure does. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. When you get more rusty containers, it all looks. And anyway, I also like taking advantage of things that come out of nowhere. And one was the uh, the famous Greenwich Observatory, which had moved into the countryside, closed the building. And I, I just couldn't resist trying to get a long lease on it, even though everybody said, don't go near it. It's in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, that's a part. Oh, and we didn't have any money either, but uh, but this is it. I don't know whether you can see that, Paul, can you? That, that's good. That's good. Now, we'll, yeah. we'll include, we'll, like I said, we'll include links too to the yeah. now, observatory. If you notice, there are those six green domes, which have telescopes in, a historic telescope, big ones. Um, but for some reason, only the English would do. There's a, there's a lily pond. And it's all sort of, um, you know, and visiting astronomers used to walk into it at night because they weren't really expecting to find a lily pond in the middle of an observatory. But that's the English way. And I'll, I'll, as you see, it's a collection of small buildings. And then you'll notice there's some tents and round the back are sort of geodesic domes and marquees. And I thought the best thing to do with this, I don't want to mess with the telescopes apart from getting them working, because I don't, I don't like historic stuff that's all been tricked out too much. We'll use the outside. And if you look at the outside, you will see, um, and you can look on Google Maps, they're all outdoor exhibits in there and round there and demo areas in the domes there. And round the back, we've got a sort of show dome and various other things. But as I withdraw the picture, you see the, um, they said, what's the catchment area? Well, there's the catchment <laughs> area. Uh, you know, there might be a few sheep and cows every now and again, but it's not, not a brilliant capture, a cap, captive audience, shall we so say. You, <laughs> so you, you really wanted to keep the historic, Greenwich telescopes and the observatories yeah. for what their purpose was, but to use the sort of interstitial spaces, the outdoors, and a, I know you have a small indoor space too, to yeah. really create this, this really combination yeah. of places to engage with science. Yeah, and we do, the thing is variety, it's not just exhibits, there's people talk to you and point at telescopes and, uh, and tell stories about them. Um, it's a lovely place to be, just even if you're not going to do anything, it's a lovely place to be. But there's a lot to do and, uh, as well. So we've got hands-on exhibits on, on the inside. We build them all in our workshop in Acton, by the way. Um, so we decide what we want to build and we build it. So but we don't have to go through a process. So, but you know that I can understand, especially if you, on paper, you say, okay, well, there are these historic telescopes and observatories, but it is in the middle of nowhere. Let's be honest about that. Mm -hmm. but, but clearly, how many years have you been open as a, as a uh, science 20, center? 26 now. It's been incremental. It wasn't all done in one go. We didn't have the funds. The way we fund ourselves, by the way, we, we don't depend on grants too much, but the workshop has grown as well. Uh, and build stuff for other people as well as ourselves. But that, that, so we get an income off that. We also get a good view of the science center world. And we're thinking of new things all the time because that's what people want us to do. Or are the best clients want us to think of them. You'll know that, <laughs> you know all about that. <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's certainly one of the, the dirty little secrets of exhibit development. Oh. I'd love to do an exhibit that's fun, that I think is fun. So sure, let's do that. So, um, well, so obviously the, the at Hurstman Sioux, uh, the observatory that you've done, you've found science in the landscape literally in, in different yeah. ways. And obviously people, whether it's in the middle of nowhere or not, people have found their way to you yes, uh, for that. Yeah. The schools come in minibuses and uh, 
we, we have an astronomy festival and people come and camp there, 60 odd campsite camp pitches. And what's interesting is we've been doing that about 15 years now, that particular thing. And people meet up once a year, families will meet up at that occasion once a year. And of course, meanwhile, the kids are at university and, and they come and they, they swap family notes you know, and they bring telescopes. And uh, I remember riding back first bike from France and I arrived at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, I missed the ferry or something. And um, I thought there won't be much going on. And it was, it was alive. There were telescopes all over the place, you know, people sitting around, bottles of wine. Because yeah, of, cause of <laughs> course you use the telescopes at night. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. So that, that, it was good for me because it, I had a long ride and then entered this wonderful atmosphere. Well, it seems also like uh, a common thread of finding science in the landscape. I know uh, early on you worked with the, was it the Discovery Domes or the Domes of Discovery, where it was uh, almost like, I'm going to say, it was almost like a traveling science show. You would set up these tents and, and uh, in different places to sort of seed the idea of a more permanent science center, yeah. is my impression. Well, that's what I did. In fact, the tents, uh, the, I'll come back to this, if you see there, those are the, those are the tents. I had five of them uh, and joined them together in a demo area, a dark area, and a general exhibit area. And uh, anywhere you go in England, it's amazing. Um, you, there's always a, a flat, and you lift it up, and there's electricity in there. It's amazing. <laughs> or somebody directs you to where this is. But I got to see my own country and, and Scotland and everything and uh, built a version uh, with the Pacific Science Centre called Science Carnival, which uh, went around the States. I think a tornado swallowed it in the end. But, uh, but that a truly American experience. Well, so, but it seems like you have continued that thread of science shows. You were mentioning um, yeah. more recent work in Slovenia. Yeah, there's a, there's a great little science center in Slovenia called the House of Experiments. Um, and um, the, the, the chap who runs it, Mihal Kos, he's, he's very imaginative, dedicated chap. And... Uh, he got a whole group of us, some from the States, you'll, you'll know some of them. Um, uh, Israel, Australia, Denmark, Sweden, all over the place. People come and we do shows on the bridges of Slovenia. And uh, it's, it, it's become quite a festival, not this year, it couldn't happen. We have to do it virtually, but the, it's, it's also used as a training thing for people new to the centre. Come and meet the old guys, you know, or, or just join in and bring a show with you and try it out. It's a fantastic event, really amazing. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, you know, we, we've talked about, and you, you mentioned, you know, uh, a lot of times when people are thinking about starting a science center or an interactive museum or, or any museum, you know, sometimes the, the notion of the costs of architecture and the building and all, all the other sort of peripheral costs, the doors um, are, are uh, sometimes a little daunting or off-putting. I mean, what advice would you have for somebody, you know, somebody who's in a place that doesn't have a science center, a science museum, and they're like, ah, I'd love to really, you know, share the excitement about science and share ideas with people. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what would you tell them in a way well, that wouldn't involve, it wouldn't involve uh, necessarily millions of dollars for architecture? Nothing against architects, by the way. Well, it all depends on the, um, on the mood, really. Um, the thing is to find an old place and get in there and do something, um, which, which is getting harder because 
um, property developers find those places first these days and put, put a block of apartments up there. So the, the places in which you can do this are sometimes hard to find. That's why I went out with the tent, you know, the five tents. And what happened was the exhibits that used to be in those, we turned into a traveling thing that people could use to start their science center off. Because I think the important thing is to see your public first, get to know how interested they are. And, I'll, and it can be as simple as you like. And, it's, and it's, like a, it's like a gigantic physical prototype. I mean, it's, a, it's like literally yeah. a prototype of an entire science center. Yeah. Because the, my view is part of the science center is not all the wonderful things you see, it's the wonderful people who go uh, and you can enthuse with them. And I remember when I was working with Richard Gregory again, uh, I don't know, I think the UK experience is having no money somehow. Oh, I'll tell you a story, Just, I'll tell you a quick story. I was, what's new in Europe, it was, um, I think the America IAAA thing, um, Museums Association, what's new in Europe? And I was new in Europe with my tents. And so was La Villette with its sort of trillions of francs, super phenomenal place. And the, uh, the French guy was on before I was. He was, oh, you know, the French, they have this, anything in French sounds wonderful. And, and uh, anyway, millions of francs who were you you know all that going on and I thought how the hell am I going to follow that and I said I don't know whether I'll stand far enough away to show you what I did I said well I'm Steve from England and it's interesting to to compare the two nations which are only 20 miles apart in one place with their approach to informal science learning and uh, and then I said, here's, here's the UK approach. And I, I'll just do it now. And I, I, I don't know whether you can see me. So I went like this and I looked in my pockets and I sort of went like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you my discovery dome because I, um, I thought, well, there's no way we're going to get that money. Let's just go on the road with these sort of tents, which are quick to put up. I'll just get out there, see what's out there. Uh, well, anyway, I was I was playing for jokes and uh, being a, being, and that was the first one, but very near the truth. And anyway, um, a member of the audience, which it was a largely American, um, suddenly felt sorry for me, and he and he leapt to his feet, and he goes. I won't do an American accent because I can't really, even though everybody tries. So he goes, I went to Europe and I went to Paris and I saw La Villette. And then I went to England and I saw Steve's Domes. And I tell you which one I liked and the family wouldn't stop talking about. Steve's Domes. <laughs> that, would been, that would have been perfect if the audience was Steve's Dome, Steve's <laughs> Dome, Steve's Dome. It was a bit Trumpish, I suppose. Um, but you know, obviously, me playing for sympathy <laughs> as a joke had gone over its so. own. Yeah, it went and took on a life of its well, own. I, I had a word with him. I said, Thanks for supporting me like that. I, did, I didn't need that. He said, No, it was true. The kids loved it. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, uh, you know, there, there is a, a place for discovery domes and there's a place for Lavalette, but I think, I think it's interesting what you said is just to really get on with it and not be limited by, uh, oh, well, we can't do this because we don't have a perfect building or we don't have this perfect situation. I mean, you, yeah. you, 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 if, if somebody packed up their show and a lot of museums have done this, museums without walls, like literally where they pack yeah. up their stuff in a tent and bring it to a school or they pack it in a van and bring it to yeah. a community yeah. center. I mean, that certainly is one way to start, so. Yeah.
Well, it's a good way to start. And if nothing else, it gives you experience. It gives you contacts. It's, it's great fun. You'll have a, you'll, you'll, and then you, you just have a point comes, though, where you have to go and get a proper job, you know? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Uh, and somehow both both you and I have managed to avoid having a proper job for years and years, but uh, I would say we're we're better off for it. Well, Steve, it's it's been awesome to speak with you today. Yes. Naturally, um, I uh, since we are in YouTube land, even though even though you showed us that beautiful beautiful visual aid of the observatory. Uh, we'll we'll put links to science projects. Uh, yeah, do that. And, That'd be good. and the observatory, and we'll talk about other links or references. Yeah. Uh, maybe the Nesta Nesta project. Uh, things that yeah, came a out long of that. time ago. That one. So, so I've got a notebook full of all sorts of things. Yeah. So but you we'll, know it once you say notice the science around you. You start. To, yeah. Well, I think I think that's a good. I think that's a good way. I think that's a good way to leave it today, you know, to really encourage people to notice science around them and yeah. uh, especially museum people who sometimes we yeah. we sort of lose track of what got us into this business and why we're excited about this yeah. business in the oh, first it, place. So Yeah, but museums yeah, museums are great. There's no doubt about it. But they're going through a rough time. We're lucky with the observatory, we've got outdoor space and that's what people are looking for at the moment. Yeah, for sure. Uh, All right, well, thanks, Steve. Thanks again. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, it's, uh, uh, great to see you again. Yeah. All right, take care. <laughs>